how do we define what constitutes a game? Lately, I've noticed a little bit of a fuss about certain games and whether or not they count as, well, games. I mean, for much of video game history, the question was pretty obscure outside of academia because we played games that were just handed down to us by Mother Nintendo. It used to be simple. If I just plunked down a couple hundred dollars on a video game console, then these better be games, right? But lately, there's been a groundswell of new titles like Dear Esther, Gone Home, and Mountain, which some have deigned as non-games. These games are so radically different from the games that we're used to playing, like Shadows of Mordor, NBA 2K15, or, I don't know, Shogi, that people started excitedly banging on their keyboard saying, no, 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 you just pack up your things and Get out of here. Get out of here! <laughs> Others jumped in and said yes, yes, those are games. And some, like Extra Credits, when they addressed the subject of what a game actually is, they just concluded that the entire argument was mute. It does nothing but limit us. They said, as long as we enjoy those experiences, then it doesn't really matter what we call them. But as much as I love extra credits, I kind of think that's a cop out. This is a deep and important discussion that people are very passionate about. And I don't think we should just pass it off by saying it's not relevant or it's not worthwhile. It might be one of the most important open-ended questions in games right now, but it's also a debate that's gotten really complex with its own weird lines being drawn. Steve Gaynor has vociferously defended his title Gone Home as a game, a title where you explore objects in a large Victorian house to figure out what's happened to your sister. While the creators of Monument Valley, something almost everyone would consider to be a game, wanted to call their creation a designed experience. So why do we care so much about what gets called a game? Let's take a look at both sides. On the one side, you have people who consider experiences like Gone Home, Mountain, and Proteus as games. Let's call these people game abstract. From their perspective, we need to continually push at the boundaries of what constitutes a game experience because if we limit what games are, the medium will get stuck in a rut. Then you have this other group of people, let's call them game formalists, who say no. In order for something to be called a game, it must meet a set of certain requirements. Games need challenge and fail states and competition, otherwise they're just walking simulators. And this isn't some stick in the mud philosophy from people who just want to keep others out. That's my brother, stick in the mud. They argue that you need some kind of formal line in the sand about what is and isn't a game. Because if everything is a game, then nothing is. What does that mean? Brushing your teeth can be a game, or using Netflix can be a game, as one extra credits comment commenter joked. If climbing a hill and listening to animals sing in Proteus is a game, then walking down your street in real life and listening to animals sing is also a game or signs of a nervous breakdown. For a game formalist, the best defense against this all is a game rhetoric is definitions. Now this isn't just a debate that's been happening in the trenches of YouTube. It's a conversation that's been unfolding for decades amongst big game thinkers like Johan Huysinga, Roger Kowal, Chris Crawford, and more recently Jesper Yule, an associate professor at the Royal Danish Academy of Fine Arts. Yule is attempting to create a kind of super definition, which he lays out in his paper, The Game, The Player, The World, looking for a heart of gameness. Using Yule's game requirements, you could take a game whose gameness is questionable, like Gone Home, and hold it up against the definition doing a game equivalent of an Inquisition. Gone Home meets half of Yule's definition. One, it has set rules. You have to enter a combination to get into Sam's locker, for example. Two, it requires player effort. In Gone Home, you have to find clues. And three, it has negotiable consequences. Negotiable just means that it has minimal effect on real life. Sam is fictional, she's not really in danger. But for Yule's other three requirements, Gone Home maybe doesn't stack up so much. Yule's definition says that the choice of actions you take towards reaching the goal should vary significantly. The outcomes of reaching your goals have different weights, from winning on one side to getting your butt spanked on the other. And these outcomes affect your motivation. But in Gone Home, the choices you make are the same for everyone. There's no way of playing better or worse. You're just walking through the house, analyzing porcelain knickknacks, and following a narrative. So by formalist definitions, it's not a game. Maybe it's a pretty fun interactive story, but it's not a game and shouldn't be treated as such. Stories are stories, not games. But hold up, the abstractionist would counter that because you uncover the story through your own choices, each player's experience is unique. And the game has outcomes. You can either uncover the ending to the story or not based on what you decide to do. Therefore, Gone Home meets the minimal requirements to be a game. 
whatever minimal means anyway. Even Yule himself admits that there's something oxymoronic about placing strict formal guidelines on an activity as free form as play. Since play is an activity without constraints, it seems illogical that we'd want to limit our options for whatever reason, he says. You can see why the argument goes a little bit in circles. Given how complicated this all is, why do I still think that this is a fight worth having? Well, I think that the what is a game question is important because it shows that video games have matured to a point where we can actually have this discussion. If you believe that games are really and truly important, like I do, then it's crucial that games walk the paces of other mediums. And in other mediums, the what is art what is question art? came up all the time. In music, people said that free jazz wasn't jazz, and John Cage's compositions weren't music. And a lot of people probably said that Kashmir Malevich's paintings weren't art because he painted black squares and occasionally a black circle if he was feeling randy. But he helped lead the charge of art towards a period of minimal abstraction. And then in the 60s, the photorealist reacted against that type of art by painting scenes with incredible detail. Throughout history, you see this push and pull between opposing sides that drives creativity forward. So when it comes to this question, what is a game? Debate is very good. The reality is that game formalists and game abstractionists, as much as they hate it, need each other. The former needs to hold up the values of the old guard, and the latter needs those values to react against. And all this conflict that we're seeing is just the beginning of their ebb and flow. The Sims and later games like Minecraft and Hohokam are a reaction against this idea that games need to be these problem-solving experiences that require tremendous reflexes. Then you see these other games emerge with rock-hard, pure, mechanical difficulty, like Shovel Knight and Spelunky. And at some point, you end up with the Stanley Parable, which is sort of a deconstructionist interactive lecture about games. So here we are. So in the end, we're all getting a bunch of fantastic experiences out of this debate, whether you think they're games or not. My personal hope is that when you look at the writings of someone like Jesper Yule, that you realize that when you're arguing about what is or isn't a game, you're really arguing about what you think is true and beautiful in this world. So what do you think? What is a game? Are you a game abstractionist or a game formalist or I don't know, you haven't made your mind up yet. Hash it out in the comments, and if you like what you saw, please subscribe. I'll see you next week.